Hello and welcome back to Leisure Loop. In this video, I'm going to talk about my two CNC machines, which I love, love them both. First, we'll go upstairs and talk about the Makera Carvera, which is a desktop CNC machine, fully enclosed. It has automatic tool changers, built-in vacuum, lots of great features, and a laser, and a fourth axis. And then we'll come back downstairs in the garage, and I will walk you through all the equivalent features of this ShopSaber RC4 CNC machine, which is more of a commercial unit. And then we'll end up talking about the auxiliary system, so the dust extractor, the power, the air, and some of the other requirements to make a machine like this function. Thank you for joining us. Uh, let's go upstairs and check out the Make Eric Carbera. First up, we have the spindle. This is an electric spindle capable of doing 15,000 RPMs, and it is a quarter horsepower, or about 200 watts. That is a limiting factor of the machine because that can only cut so fast before you start hearing the spindle getting bogged down. The total workspace we have is 14 inches wide by nine and a half inches deep, and then about five and a half inches of height, which is a pretty sizable workspace. One of the coolest features of this machine is it is equipped with a six automatic tool changer. That's what these are on the side. These six individual tools can be eighth inch or quarter inch end mill sizes. It has a button here to measure the height of each of the tools built in just like the other CNC machine and this has a tool probe and the probe is actually for the material the machine picks up the probe as if it's a tool and then tests the Z height to determine the thickness of the material that it's cutting from, which is a super nice feature. This machine also is equipped with a fourth axis. It's an additional add-on that allows you to cut rotational items and operate all four axes at the same time, which is a super cool feature and one of the reasons I originally purchased this machine. The last feature is a 2.5 watt laser that's underneath this little cover. That laser is actually good enough to engrave or uh, etch parts as it's cutting along and it uses the same CNC axes to make that happen. One caveat is that it's pretty smoky. You know, anytime you're using a laser, you're burning stuff. Anytime you're burning stuff, you're creating smoke. But if you were doing some combined CNC and lasering, this machine is extremely capable. It also has a built-in vacuum. That's what this little dust collector is here. And this stores about a liter of vacuumed waste, which is enough for most of your cuts, but usually has to be emptied after each cut. And then this little dust shoe does a great job not hitting or uh, messing up your parts as it does a good job collecting the vacuum and keeps this area pretty clean. The entire weight of this machine is 110 pounds. That is a lot. And the cost of it now with the options that I have would be 5,700 US dollars. It comes with these workplace holdings that are in the corner to begin with that have an automatically recognized X0, Y0 point. And there's actually a second workplace holding a little further up that is a recognized X0, Y0 point. The machine also has this wired external e-stop which works great for stopping the machine if you ever hear a bit break or something bogging down the machine. And then you just rotate it to pop that button back up. Here, there's a little tab sticking out that is a laser that measures to make sure that there's a tool in the place so that if it tries to drop a tool somewhere where a tool already exists, it will stop the machine and not allow that to happen. And it's worth mentioning that this is an enclosed machine. The enclosure is really nice and does a great job reducing the amount of sound. It also has really pretty lights on both sides so you can always see what you're working on and uh, this keeps you safe as well and prevents dust from getting outside the machine too bad. Although there are slots open underneath it that does allow dust to get through underneath and will eventually require vacuuming underneath your 110 pound machine. Overall, five stars. This thing is brilliant. You should get one. It runs on 110 power. It's quiet enough for me to sit next to with headphones on and not be bothered. And it comes with a really thorough set of bits and parts and workplace holdings and, and material hold down clamp options so that you don't have to spend a lot 
additionally to make this function. Like I said, I run an external Festool dust collector some of the time. It has a port in the back of the machine to plug right into, but uh, it is an extremely capable machine. I am doing manufacturing on this, especially for the fourth axis parts. Now let's move on to the Shop Saber RC4 in the garage. The Shop Saber RC4. This machine has a five horsepower spindle, spins at 24,000 RPMs. The difference between a five horsepower spindle and a quarter horsepower spindle is 20 times. And in a lot of cases, that means this is going to cut 20 times faster than the machine upstairs. It can also cut an area of 51 inch by 49 inch, and it allows you to flip apart. So if you wanted to do an eight foot sign, you could do half the sign, slide it over, and the other half the sign. This machine has a seven tool automatic tool changer. So these are the tools. When you put a new tool on one of these collets, the machine picks it up and it measures the length of the tool over here on a little knob. To measure the height of the table, I have a separate sensor that plugs into the spindle. The beautiful thing about this automatic tool changer on this machine is it changes these tools fast. I want to say it's 10 to 12 seconds per tool change versus about a minute per tool change upstairs. And that's because that's a air powered tool change and upstairs is an electric powered spindle. The end mills that you're able to use on a machine like this are anything that fits in an ER32 collet, which means I can go from one millimeter drill bit all the way up to a three quarter of an inch hogging bit. And you can even put a two or three inch planing bit on these to allow you to cut like a board like this or a live edge slice of tree in very few passes. As far as other features go, you can get vacuum tables to hold down your wood and your parts, especially if you're cutting bigger parts. It's super advantageous. It's also super loud and power heavy, which is why I didn't go with the vacuum table. Um, but there's not a lot of bonus features. This is a fairly simple three axis machine. The weight of this machine, just the base is 1650, but ultimately to move a machine like this because it weighs about a ton is gonna take a lot. They charge about $3,500 to move these. And it's pretty much the same whether you're shipping it across the country or moving it down the road. And lastly, the price. So the base of this machine starts at $17,000. The spindle is about $6,000. The auxiliary equipment is two or $3,000. Then there's a computer. You have a couple extra attachments. There's some optional upgrades like having a tool changer, rail attached, and the tools themselves. I think all in, you're going to be about thirty dollars to $35,000. I think I'm about $19,000 into this, but I've gotten everything used and did a lot of this setup DIY myself. But $30,000 is about what I think you could replace a machine like this for. This is a super high quality machine compared to what I need for <laughs> puzzle boxes. <laughs> All right, starting over here, I have a toolbox because you're going to need tools to work on your CNC machine and, and deal with all your air hose stuff. Then you have to have a computer to run your CNC machine. Uh, if you're like me, you'll also need an ice cream machine. The first thing I'll talk about is the power. So I have one power source that runs the CNC machine, which is 220 volts. And then I have another power source, which runs the VFD specifically for the spindle. Besides the power, we have a air compressor because the machine needs constant compressed air. To function and the air compressor that I have here barely is enough to keep up with the machine. Behind that we have a compressed air air dryer which basically has a refrigeration unit in there to pull out the humidity in the air. After the air goes into that it goes through that little bank of filters and oil filters to take oil out of the air to take water out of the air before that air gets plugged into the machine and then it gets split into a few different areas one which goes into the spindle for the air tool changers and another which goes into the spindle for the pressure because there's a little pressure in the spindle so that as dust gets blown around it doesn't seep into the spindle there's kind of air constantly blowing out of the motor uh, to keep it clean and dust free then you have the loudest piece of the system which is the dust collector so the dust gets sucked up from the machine and it goes into this little V-shaped chamber back there. I know it's kind of hard to see behind this giant air filter. It goes through there. Most of the dust gets collected into the first bucket. Then it gets sucked up into the, the actual pump itself and gets pushed down here through this one micron filter. But most of the particles lay into this second bucket. 
any tiny dust particles that come out of that one micron filter are a little dangerous, which is why you install something like this. This is like a box fan with a bunch of filters behind it that I built. And what that allows me to do is run some like MERV 13 or 15 filters so I can keep the air clean as I'm working here in the garage. But as you can see, it's a huge amount of setup, it's a lot of work, and we're taking up an entire space in the garage to make this happen. To summarize, the major advantages of this machine are its speed and its strength and the ability to run large parts on it. It's got a lot of power in the motor, which means you can cut fast and efficiently through all sorts of materials. The drawback of a machine like this is obviously the auxiliary system, the power requirements, the noise that the vacuum makes, the noise that the machine makes, the computer requirement to always be connected. Um, it's just a lot involved. There's a reason most people don't have these in their house, and there's a reason most of these are operated by people who do it for their career. The Maycara Carvera advantages, it's small, it's portable, it's super versatile, it can do aluminum, printed circuit boards, all sorts of cuts. It has tool measurements, probe measurements for your material, uh, built-in vacuum, built-in laser, fourth axis options. It's really a really competent machine and it can do anything that you need done. Um, it just won't do it very quickly. Its limitation is its power, in my opinion, but I, I would highly recommend either machine. The Makara Carvera was perfect to learn on extremely forgiving. If you have advice, tips, tricks, if you can see that I'm doing something wrong, please put a comment below and uh, I will respond to you. If you didn't see our last video, we made this pros and cons chart explaining the pros and cons of 3D printing versus CNC machining. If you're interested in my puzzle boxes, check out leisureloop.com. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great night and I will see you in the next video.